once Dragon is inside, the crew hands-off point, retreat and breakout are not permitted. And for your awareness, we have sunset in a little less than 8.5 minutes. And copies all on the big loop. Go for docking. So Doug on uh, on the spacecraft confirming their go for docking. They're going to put down their visors. Got some uh, instructions there about the the crew hands off point that we had talked about earlier. That's a point where we don't want the the crew issuing any commands to the vehicle. It's about uh, just about two meters away from the docking adapter. I believe the number is about 1.7 meters. Station Houston on the big loop. Houston and station are now go for docking. Chris, you can monitor per steps three and four. Three and four in one decimal one zero four. Crew dragon approach and retreat monitoring. Copy steps three and four. Next dragon on the big loop. Our visors are down. Copy visors down. With the crew confirming their visors down, we should see the final approach resume. Copy inbound. Station copy. And we're going to be racing that sunset. The approach has resumed. Dragon closing in. We're inside 20 meters. And yeah, that, that crew hands off point uh, should come up in about three minutes or so, uh, right before we get that final docking. It comes about 20 seconds prior, or just about two meters away from the station still. And that's uh, just the crew not issuing any abort commands. At that point, it would be uh, too late. And so any aborts would be executed automatically by Dragon itself. So we're closing in at less than a tenth of a meter per second at this point. You can see the, the surface section of Draco is just doing all these very small, minor attitude corrections. Really, the, the autonomous docking system at work, making sure that the, the uh, vestibule and the soft capture system is lined up with IDA2, it's the international docking adapter. You can see much more clearly there the hinge mechanism for the nose cone. Those four uh, black circles are the four bulkhead Dracos, not to be used at this time. And then, of course, the, the pedals of the soft capture system. Wow. Dragon on the big loop, we're inside 10 meters. We cannot make out the dark docking target, but we do see the outline. We copy and concur, 10 meters. All right, we're less than 10 meters away. Again, we're closing at that rate of less than a tenth of a meter per second. We should be just about one minute, 45 seconds away from docking. There is a, uh, a center line camera right in that middle so that you can see where the Ford hatch is uh, and right in the middle of that there's a window and there's a center line camera that is aligned with the center of the vehicle and the center of the docking mechanism. So that is, is what the autonomous docking system is using to line up with uh, sort of a cross hatch, um, uh, cross target on the, the docking port. Again the Ford docking port um, on PMA2, or the pressurized mating adapter. And we are just five meters away. Again, we're racing that sunset. This dragon continues to close four meters to go. Those shadows of the, of the space station on the vehicle.
Yeah, you can actually see the uh, centerline camera pretty clearly there, um, sort of with the contrast of the, the sun right now. Three meters to go. Two meters. We are inside the hands-off point, the chop, the crew hands-off point. One meter to go. Soft capture complete. Dragon is <laughs> Soft capture confirmed. Stand by for retraction and docking. Stand by. And we just heard it. Soft capture. We have docking. That coming at 7.16 a.m. Pacific time with the station and Dragon flying 262 statute miles right over the border between northern China and Mongolia. You saw a little bit of motion there uh, of Dragon. That was that relative motion that the soft capture system is damping out. Once that motion is, is clear, then uh, the soft capture system will be retract, retracted and uh, Dragon will go for hard capture. Again, if just now tuning in, that soft capture, that docking coming 7.16 a.m. Pacific, 10.16 a.m. over on the East Coast. Dragon and the International Space Station were flying 262 statute miles right over the border between northern China and Mongolia. So that soft capture ring now going to retract. It's one more step on the way to docking complete. Yeah, on board. Yeah, and so the, the next step here is once, once the soft capture ring is retracted, there are uh, 12 latches that we refer to as hard capture latches. Um, those are what will really create that pressure tight seal between the Dragon spacecraft and the International Space Station. So once soft capture is complete, and uh, I believe we'll get that call from, from our core here, Anna, then uh, we'll get We'll get confirmation of hard capture, and uh, the crew, of course, aboard have have this information on their displays, so they'll also see indication of hard capture complete. And uh, once those two steps are done, then that's that's docking complete. That's right, and we're we're expecting to hear some words from everybody. A pretty monumental moment. I mean, for Doug Hurley, he's returning to where he last docked uh, almost nine years ago on the very last space shuttle mission, uh, now commanding the very first commercial spacecraft to deliver astronauts to the International Space Station. That's, that's got to be cool for them. Uh, they've, they've mentioned quite a few times that their best friends uh, are our favorite dads in space, as we've been calling them. Uh, this, is, this has got to be really cool for them. It's got to be really cool for their families, too, watching this. It looks like we have another quick handover. We'll get that video back shortly. We're about 75% complete already with that retraction. Once that retraction is completed, We'll keep an eye out for the 12 ready to hook indicators. Uh, once those are ready, those 12 hooks will begin to engage and that'll securely attach Dragon to the International Space Station. Yeah, so right now the vehicle confirming that the uh, soft capture system has is deployed correctly and is fully retracted. And then uh, once the soft capture system is fully retracted, that'll set up the vehicle to, to put in the hard capture uh, pins there's 12 of those around the docking ring, and that's what creates that uh, airtight seal uh, between the Dragon spacecraft and the International Space Station. Uh, the, cat, the volume between, which we refer to as the vestibule, is currently not pressurized. Um, of course, it was just exposed to the vacuum of space until uh, literally minutes ago, about four minutes ago. So 
um, just waiting for the vehicle to get that. Dragon SpaceX, ring retraction complete. Docking sequence is holding for MCS reconfiguration. All right, so we, we see those ready to hook indicators are lighting up green. So we should be just about to step into uh, those 12 hooks beginning to engage uh, to get that secure mate between Dragon and the international docking adapter on the space station. Wow, right now those two vehicles are flying together. They are attached they to are. each other. It's. It's been just under 19 hours since we lifted off. We're actually at about 18 hours, 58 minutes, and 42 seconds. So we promised about a 19-hour ride up to station, and we made it just a few minutes before that. Uh, they were able to dock a few minutes ahead of schedule. We were tracking them to still take about another 10 minutes, uh, but able to step through all of their burns about 16 minutes ahead of schedule and get us to where we are now. If you missed it just a few moments ago, that initial docking coming at 7.16 a.m. Pacific, 10.16 a.m. over on the east coast of the United States, and they were 262 statute miles flying together over the uh, northern border of China and Mongolia. So really yeah. exciting. We're just waiting for this docking complete to be confirmed. We'll expecting to hear some words obviously from the crew on board and all the excited teams down here who are just waiting for this moment and then it's time to start getting dragon integrated into the station there will be an umbilical that will get mated and that will allow dragon to flow data and power into the station systems and then it'll be over to the crew endeavor and station at houston on the big loop mcs is configured we're proceeding with hook driving All right, and they did a quick, uh, so the, the motion control system onboard station now back under those control moment gyros, so handed over from the Russian thrusters and Dragon now given the go to drive those hooks. We have to do that changeover of attitude control before we drive those hooks as the Russian thrusters a little bit uh, more dynamic in their control of attitude. And if you had a thruster firing while you were starting to drive those hooks, that could miss a line. So going over to the smoother control moment gyros on the U.S. side, now controlling the attitude on board the station. And those hooks, those 12 hooks on Dragon, about to start driving. Right now, uh, Dragon and ISS attached, uh, just flying off the east coast of, uh, of China. Uh, just underneath Japan. Attached to each other, we, uh, we recently passed over to the, the orbital night, so we're on the, uh, currently the dark side of the world. And actually, uh, we're, we're lucky enough to, to see the soft capture happen just as we were crossing over the Terminator line. And if you're wondering what you're looking at, this is uh, one of the cameras on the very outboard part of the Japanese experiment module, looking back uh, in towards the very front part of node two, where Dragon is currently docked. We are in an orbital nighttime, that's why everything is so dark, but you're looking at Dragon, it's, it is um, horizontal to the ground. Uh, so the hatch part is uh, right where that green light pretty much is. You can see the nose cone still illuminated above it, and it is currently attached to an international docking adapter on the International Space Station. And inside that capsule are, are Bob Bankin and, and Doug Hurley, uh, first astronauts to fly on a, a privately developed vehicle up to the International Space Station. But test pilots got, got to do some fun tests today have a few more steps before they can actually get aboard uh, and ingress to the International Space Station. And that's uh, what we were heard over the, uh, the big loop, that transition which allows us to then uh, proceed with hard capture. And we're seeing the first set of hooks, so the first six out of the 12 are now closed, six more to go. Again, there are 12 of those along the ring. And that helps us uh, ensure that we have uh, an airtight seal. It is vacuum around them right now, so we want to make sure we're, we're keeping all of that valuable uh, life support in the vehicle. 
Now the combined ISS Dragon vehicle. Meanwhile, inside the capsule, Bob and Doug also standing by for this hard capture to complete. And once we have that docking complete call, uh, they'll be able to start stepping through uh, a number of procedures to get them ready to move into the International Space Station. They'll get the, the go ahead to doff or get out of their suits. And then they'll have some activities on the Dragon side uh, to prepare for the hatch opening. Uh, Chris Cassidy will mainly be working on the station side to pressurize the vestibule. So as Shiv has talked about, the, the space between the, the Dragon capsule and the space station was exposed to vacuum. And even after this tight seal has occurred, we'll still be at vacuum inside. So we'll actually open up a valve to uh, supply air from the station side into that space between the Dragon and station hatchways and they'll get it up to the same ambient pressure that we'll have inside of Dragon uh, and on the station itself. Uh, they'll wait for it to thermally balance out, make sure we don't have any temperature swings as we're bringing it up from vacuum. So probably from a very cold temperature up to about the about 72 degrees that they have uh, in their cabin temperature on board the station and then we'll get the hatches open. Dragon SpaceX, hard capture complete. Stand by for docking completion. Yeah. Now, now that uh, hard capture is complete, so that's confirmation of those uh, 12 latches to create that airtight seal. Now that's complete, the umbilicals from the station side will, uh, will interface with the Dragon vehicle umbilicals, and that'll provide power and uh, communications through space station directly to Dragon. Uh, pretty much the whole way up, Dragon's been using a combination of batteries and its solar cells pointed at the sun to make sure that it has enough electrical power for the journey up. And we're just standing by now for that umbilical to get mated and that's going to Again, as Shiva was just saying, start the power and data transfer between Dragon and the space station. They've been uh, transmitting data through RF radio frequency uh, on the way uphill. Uh, and during the final approach, this will give uh, a hard mate, basically a wired LAN connection between the Dragon spacecraft uh, and the International Space Station itself. And then also being able to draw power uh, from the station systems using those great big solar arrays. Uh, that are used to generate all of the electricity for systems on board the station. The soft capture system has been stowed. We see the umbilical starting to deploy. About 40% of the way so far, going pretty quickly. Should just take a couple more seconds until we're all the way connected. And then we should be getting that docking complete call out from the core here in Mission Control, SpaceX and Hawthorne standing by. Dragon SpaceX, docking sequence is complete. Next Dragon, we copy docking complete to say that it's been a real honor to be just a small part of this uh, nine year endeavor since the last time the United States spaceship has docked with the International Space Station. We have to congratulate the men and women of SpaceX at Hawthorne, McGregor, and at Kennedy Space Center. 
their incredible efforts over the last several years to make this possible cannot go overstated. I'd also like to thank Kathy Leaders and her team of the Commercial Crew Program of NASA. An outstanding job by everyone. Last, I'd like to thank the, the men and women of the National Aeronautics and Space Agency. This is an incredible time to be at NASA. Three new vehicles to be flown, continuing mission in low Earth orbit, and then to the moon and Mars. We thank you again and congratulate you. Dragon arriving. Crew of Expedition 63 is honored to welcome uh, Dragon and the Commercial Crew Program to uh, welcome aboard the International Space Station. Bob and Doug, glad to have you as part of the crew. Well done. Bravo Zulu. Okay, Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Endeavor, this is Houston. Bob and Doug, welcome to the International Space Station after your spectacular rendezvous and docking of the first Crew Dragon vehicle. For the first time since the retirement of the space shuttle, you have completed a historic ride to the ISS and have opened up a new chapter in human space exploration. On behalf of the flight control teams here in Houston and in Hawthorne, California, and to our SpaceX colleagues, bravo on a magnificent moment in spaceflight history and on the start of a new journey that has changed the face of space travel in this new area of space transportation. Bob and Doug, good luck, and we look forward to working with you on board. Dragon SpaceX, Bob, Bob and Doug, we here at SpaceX are honored to have been part of ushering in this new era of human spaceflight. On behalf of the SpaceX and NASA partnership, congratulations on a phenomenal accomplishment and welcome to the International Space Station. Well, thank you, Anna. We appreciate uh, all the good words and uh, everyone thanking us, but it truly was a magnificent effort by the entire team, the SpaceX team, the NASA team, and a team across America who was able to pull this off and bring human spaceflight again to our nation. Thanks for everything. Happy to be aboard. And Dragon SpaceX, with that, ground will be enabling hard line power and comm connection shortly. You are go to Dothra Suits per procedure 4.012. We will be configuring your video to go external shortly, and we have one request for Bob's suit doffing when you're ready to copy. We copy all. Go ahead for Bob's suit. During your approach suit leak check, we noticed Bob's suit pass with a lower PSID than his previous vehicle and ONC checks. We still had plenty of margin to support you in a depress, but in order to rule out potential hardware issues, when Bob is doffing, after he opens his structural zipper, check all three bladder zipper heads to see if any are partially closed. It is possible that if the head is backed off slightly, that the white tooth is partially visible or a small gap can be seen between the end of the zipper head and the gasket end. Please report observations. Happy. Bob will take a close look at his zippers when he dops, and he'll get dopping first, so uh, we'll let you know as soon as we see something or if we see something. Great. Thank you so much. Wow. So now uh, Dragon has completed its docking sequence. There's a number of checks. Um, that, that was an absolutely historic moment. Uh, and in spite of that, the, the ground team's getting right back to business, um, talking about the, the suit performance. Just let us know when the uh, interior cameras are secured. 
on Drag It Around. Turn the cameras off first before we get them out of their suits. Absolutely. (laughs) So, um, spacecraft is now docked. Uh, They've got several tasks that they're going to need to be able to do. Um, While we're waiting for those tasks to happen, we're actually going to take a short break. But uh, if, in case you, you just missed it, the Dragon spacecraft is now docked to the International Space Station, docked at 7.16 uh, a.m. local time. Yep. Um, Bob and Doug are, are at the space station. Yeah, they're there. It was just under a 19-hour journey from their launch to their docking, so pretty much right on what we were expecting. They got there a little bit early today, which was nice as they were able to get through all those burns. Uh, but they're, they're, I mean, they're docked. It's it's going to be a little while. They have to do that vestibule pressurization, and then they'll have to do and some leak checks. Dragon on dragon to ground for uh, Bob. I've got both uh, structural zip- zippers on my gloves uh, lowered, and I do see the, uh, white teeth visible on both sides. It looks like a full white tooth. I'll give you an update once I uh, get to the leg zipper. Copy. White teeth on both sides and we'll await your next status. So the crew right now just going through some checks of their gloves. They're about to get out of their suits. That'll be the first step for the crew on board Dragon. For the crew on board station, Chris Cassidy is going to start getting that vestibule pressurized and then they're going to do leak checks. So they're going to be actually taking atmosphere from station, putting it into that vestibule. And then once we get all the leak checks done, things are thermally stabilized, it'll be time for hatch opening. We'll be able to see Bob and Doug get into the space station for the first time uh, from onboard the Dragon spacecraft. And again, for Doug Hurley, this is the exact port he was at almost nine years ago when he was on the very last space shuttle mission. And now he's commanding the first commercial vehicle to dock with the International Space Station. I think that's going to do it for us in Hawthorne. We're going to give you into the very capable hands of Gary Jordan to take you through the rest of the hatch opening. We're going to be watching from here and following along. We can't wait to see these crew members on board the International Space Station. Thank you for everybody who tuned in. We hope you enjoyed the launch. We hope you enjoyed enjoyed the ride uphill. We really hope you were with us every single moment from suit up until now. So you've been up for over 24 hours. Uh, But it's been an incredible experience for us to see these guys get on board the International Space Station, to watch Dragon go through the paces, to be lofted into orbit on Falcon 9, something we've been waiting for for years, seeing it come to fruition, I'm still grappling with. Dragon, SpaceX Uh, on Dragon to ground, video is no And Shiv, it was an honor doing this with you today. Yeah, absolutely, Dan. Um, You know, the... Dragon, Cappies, thanks, Anna. Can't can't step on the crew. That's that's the one rule. (laughs) Um, You know, it, it... there are some really great words there from all the flight control teams about how this was a joint partnership between NASA and SpaceX. I think everyone is over the moon here at SpaceX for, for this. Um, Bob and Doug have got to be excited and, and now back back to business to, to get the vestibule ready to go and then uh, get them on board the station. So again, thank you for following us. Please, um, please continue to watch as Gary takes over for the hatch opening portion and uh, keep following our social media for for more updates on on what's happening with uh, Hatch Open. Over to you, Gary. Thank you, Shiva. Thank you, Dan. What an incredible flight for Bob and Doug lifting off just yesterday and now in space attached to the International Space Station. Some kind words all over after docking at 9.16 a.m. Central and a hard mate uh, just 11 minutes later. We're still not done here. We're going to take you through the uh, pressurization sequence and eventually hatch opening of the International Space Station. SpaceX Dragon on Dragon to Ground. Cabin mic check come. And I hear you loud and clear on Dragon to Ground. How me? Loud and clear. Excellent. Good comm checks. We still have a lot of work to do here. We're going to pressurize the vestibule and eventually get... uh... And SpaceX Dragon with an update from Bob. It looks like uh, white tooth on the uh, leg zipper as well. We'll take a close look if we can see anything else that might have uh, resulted in that uh, lower leak check pressure. Copy. Really appreciate the report. Thank you. Teams behind me will be configuring the Dragon and the International Space Station to welcome Bob and Doug aboard. 
Uh, first, of course, the uh, International Space Station Attitude Control. Control moment gyros uh, really holding the uh, Dragon in place through the hard capture sequence. We'll start enabling those thrusters and pressurizing the vestibule. It'll take about an hour uh, until we're able to get the uh, hatch open. The teams here in Mission Control Houston Orbit 2, led by Flight Director Zeb Scoville, will be taking us through that process. Aboard the International Space Station, Commander Chris Cassidy standing by in uh, Node 2. Uh, right in front of that is the pressurized mating adapter. He uh, recently opened up the hatch to introduce some of the station air and mix it, uh, get a nice mix in there, uh, avoiding some CO2 pockets. That hatch you see just beyond Chris Cassidy there is normally closed. Uh, he was able to open it a little bit earlier today, mix some of that cabin air, and uh, get rid of those CO2 pockets, make sure it's all clean and ready uh, for Bob and Doug. He closed it shortly after just to make sure no FOD or uh, foreign objects, anything were to float in there that would uh, inhibit uh, any hatch opening process today. One of the, one of the uh, next milestones for Chris Cassidy will be to open up that hatch. He's got some cameras you see placed uh, within that node. We'll get some good views of the hatch opening and welcoming Bob and Doug here in uh, just about an hour. A big moment in history today, May 31st, 2020. Just on the other side of that hatch, Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley have successfully arrived at the International Space Station. Still a couple of milestones to get through. Before we can open up that hatch, it's going to take some time. First, pressurizing the vestibule in between the station and Dragon. We'll bring that up to pressure. It's going to take some time for that uh, pressure to stabilize. Of course, the, the uh, temperature uh, within that vestibule uh, causes a little bit of swing, so we'll just wait for that to pressurize or to stabilize before opening up that hatch. Here in Mission Control Houston, Flight Director Zeb Scoville welcoming the director of the NASA Johnson Space Center, Mark Geyer. We'll have a few other uh, VIPs here in the room uh, to welcome Bob and Doug once they get through that hatch. Now again, this uh, repressurization and hatch opening process is going to take some time. You see now we're uh, going to have some intermittent losses with the communication from the International Space Station. You're seeing now the International Space Station Flight Control Room, led by Flight Director Zeb Scoville. Just a handover of some of those audio and visual communications. We'll be regaining those uh, shortly. Might lose them intermittently throughout uh, the repressurization process, but the teams here will be monitoring uh, all of the procedures. Again, pressurizing that vestibule and eventually getting to that hatch opening. From right to left there, seated, you see Flight Director Zeb Scoville. It was he who was leading the teams for both the launch of Bob and Doug over at the Cape. He was leading the teams here in Mission Control Houston. You just saw uh, the Johnson Space Center Director Mark Geyer walk off to the side. Seated next to Zeb Scoville, Joshua Kutrick. He is uh, one of the members of the most recent class of astronauts, the class of 2017. Canadian Space Agency astronaut uh, went through candidate training and officially became uh, an astronaut just recently.
Again, a few milestones uh, to get uh, through to that hatch opening. First, the International Space Station attitude control has been successfully switched uh, from control moment gyro only control, uh, enabling some of the thrusters on the International Space Station. We also just received word that Dragon is uh, successfully receiving power. Ground ISS power connection has been established. And there you have it. Uh, Dragon is successfully receiving power from the International Space Station. And Dragon copies on Dragon to ground that uh, power has been established. Just uh, let us know when we should make a uh, hard line comm check. We will, Co. Thank you. For those of you just joining us, you are getting a live look at uh, NASA astronaut Chris Cassidy, commander of the International Space Station, doing some of the prep work uh, to open up the hatch and get ready uh, to welcome Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley aboard the International Space Station. They launched successfully yesterday at 2.22 uh, p.m. Central Time, 3.22 p.m. Eastern and uh, docked successfully with a contact and capture just a little bit ago at uh, 9.16 a.m. Central Time, 10.16 Eastern. Now, some of the milestones uh, to get that hatch open have already taken place. First, uh, attitude control. Uh, for some of the docking sequence, for um, the initial contact and capture, attitude control was on Russian thrusters. Um, that was moved to control moment gyros for uh, hard mate, making sure that everything lined up and we got those ready-to-hook indicators green before driving those hooks. Uh, the attitude control has since been switched uh, to enable some thrusters on the International Space Station. We did get confirmation of good power uh, being delivered from ISS to the internet to the uh, Dragon. Next will be to test some hard line communication between Dragon and the International Space Station.
Dragon and Station. Dragon and Station. It's Houston calling on the Big Loop. We're prepared and getting ready to transition the comm system to Hardline, at which time we're going to do a couple comm checks. We just want to make sure everybody's on board with that uh, and aware. So, Dragon, first, maybe let me know if you hear this and if you're go with that plan. Houston uh, Endeavor on the big loop, we had you loud and clear. Houston Station copies and concurs. Okay, Endeavor and Station, we have you loud and clear on RF right now. We are putting it in work now, so transitioning comm system to hardline, and we'll call you back for voice checks momentarily. Endeavor copies. This is Mission Control Houston. The voice you just heard was Capcom Joshua Kutrick from here in Mission Control Houston. Uh, we're laying through the big loop that's integrated communications with Dragon and the International Space Station, just taking us through those procedures uh, until we get to hatch opening. Now there's an umbilical connection with Dragon, connecting Dragon to the International Space Station. We did get good confirmation that power is flowing uh, from the International Space Station to Dragon. Next, we'll be proceeding with some of the communications checks. The big loop uh, established on the C2V2 common communications for visiting vehicle through uh, some of the last legs of the rendezvous and docking of Dragon uh, to the International Space Station. We'll switch that over to hardline communications, testing that out here shortly. We're going to get some good views of station today. You see Chris Castaigne working inside No. 2. Just on the other side is the hatch. That hatch is separating uh, between the International Space Station and the pressurized mating uh, uh, adapter. One more hatch to go after that. That hatch uh, opens up uh, to uh, the Dragon hatch with Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley on the other side. Just surrounding Chris Cassidy from this view, you can see a series of cameras. We're going to get some great views uh, from Node 2 there on the left, a couple of high-definition cameras. On the right, a 360 VR camera. Part of an initiative to uh, engage viewers and provide views that from the International Space Station that have never been seen before. We'll get to see uh, some of those 360-degree views later after they're configured and stitched on the ground, now being recorded during this historic moment today, May 31st, 2020. Affirmative, we are on the same page. Those steps in the execution note are all that's needed. Copy and work.
You're getting a live look at Chris Cassidy aboard the International Space Station. Just in front of him is that 360-degree camera. He's got cameras situated all over, no two pointing right towards that hatch. On the other side, we'll be welcoming Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley uh, after pressurization of the vestibule, and uh, we'll start beginning uh, hatch opening after that. Yeah, we copy MPEV open, Chris. Another handover of uh, communication from the tracking and data relay satellites providing video and audio communication from the International Space Station now integrated uh, with the Dragon, uh, Dragon Power. Still looking towards some of those hard line communication checks. Again, we'll lose uh, communication intermittently as the International Space Station flies 269 statute miles. Station Houston on two for Chris. We're go for open on the node two forward ouch. Regaining some of that uh, video from International Space Station, Chris Cassidy given the go to open that node 2 forward hatch. Again, he opened it a little bit earlier today uh, to allow some of the station air to mix into the pressurized mating adapter. There it is. Now again, it's there's a uh, few more hatches uh, to open until we uh, are able to welcome Bob and Doug aboard the International Space Station. You're looking through the hatch into the pressurized mating adapter. Uh, there's another hatch down there uh, through the pressurized mating adapter uh, that opens up to the International Docking Adapter. Houston on three, hey Josh, the uh, no, there was zero. Uh, Zero on DPDT and the no two forward hatch is open. And Chris, we copy no two forward hatch open. Uh, we concur your go for the next yellow activity. That's your 1515 activity. It's step two in 2.102 two Crew Dragon ISS arrival through hatch opening. Basically, you're going to cycle the eight pass equalization valve. And Dragon SpaceX on Dragon to ground, if desired, reference procedure 4, decimal 400 to monitor vestibule pressurization. And copies for small.
SpaceX Dragon on Dragon to Ground for 4.012. We've uh, completed uh, up to Section 5, and we've got a timer started for one hour. Copy, completed through Section 5, and your suits are drying, and you have started a timer for one hour. With that, do we have your permission to come back on board? Give you, uh, get you back on board. We copy. We are go to come back on board. And with that, you are go to perform sections one through three of 4.400. We do recommend deferring your step 2.1 for the waste system flush until closer to hatch opening. In section three, as you are performing your inventory, please collect all your food and water bottle trash and consolidate it into the two trash bags within their common bags in location 18. You will transfer the plastic bags containing this trash to ISS for disposal during a scheduled activity after ISS ingress. And do note that you are welcome to defer this inventory until after you eat your meal that is scheduled for right about now. Okay, Anna, um, if you could uh, give us five minutes before you guys have come back on board, uh, we do have some clothing config to uh, complete. Understand we've got to go for sections one, two, and three of 4.400, and we will consolidate our trash um, into the bags provided in location uh, 18. And we'll defer the docked waste configuration section two of 4.400 until it gets closer to hatch opening. Station, we copy 1507. We and copy and we will wait five minutes before coming on board and we'll uh, check with you with before we do so if we don't hear from you first. Copy, ready. Thanks, Anna. This is Mission Control Houston. You're listening to crews on board the International Space Station and Dragon prepare for opening the hatch. You're seeing Chris Cassidy aboard the International Space Station already open the hatch to the pressurized mating adapter just below that hatchway you see at the center of the screen here. On the other side of the hatch is the hatchway uh, to the International Docking Adapter. On the other side of that, the uh, recently docked Crew Dragon. Vestibule pressurization is underway. This will equalize the pressure between Dragon and the International Space Station. Once it does come up to pressurization, it will take some time to equalize that pressure. Uh, because of the temperature difference in the uh, vestibule, just take some time to stabilize. Dragon Endeavor, it's Houston uh, calling you on hard line now for a voice check. How do you read?
Endeavor, it's Houston calling. Space to ground two via hard line now for a voice check. Do you read? Houston calling. They got a same voice check. How do we do this? Counting. One, two, one. One, two, two. One, two, three. One, two, four. One, two, five. And Station Houston on two, Anatoly, we hear you loud and clear. Um, we're going to swap a couple minor things here and try Dragon again. We're still trying to get calm with Dragon. Stand by one. And Dragon again. Dragon is a voice check. How do we do this? Counting one to one, one to two, one to three, one to four, one to five. 